that escalated quickly. Explosions right across this vast country. Turns out that electing a president who can't even say Kiev properly. The capital city of Kiev. And who responded to the attack by going to bed didn't deter Putin. The White House issued a press release saying that Biden will publicly address the crisis sometime, quote, tomorrow afternoon. Presumably after he wakes up from his third nap of the day. Meanwhile, Nancy Pelosi doesn't even know what country Russia invaded. Well, if you look at the map and you see Hungary, and you see how it is concerned. Turns out that repealing Trump's ban on transgenders in the military didn't deter Putin. Turns out that the Pentagon's effort to help non-binary people who identify as they, them, serve openly in the military didn't deter Putin. Putin's manly recruitment ads stand no chance against Ukraine's they, them army. Really, how did that work out for you? Turns out NATO's commitment to inclusion and diversity didn't deter Putin. At NATO. Diversity is our strength. Putin waited until the West was weakly led, low on patriotism and manhood, with the media obsessed over domestic trivialities and politicians with a penchant for waging war on their own citizens. Perfect timing! Meanwhile, there still seems to be a lot of confusion about whether this represents a world war or merely woke war one. I feel like I'm watching George Floyd die again, only the country version. We all stand around knowing this is wrong, but helpless to stop it. What can we do? Hashtag Ukraine is George Floyd. Reports that Russian Spetsnaz soldiers have already begun tearing down George Floyd murals in Kiev have been denied. I've got a question for you. Do you think what Putin's done is worse than racism? But Putin said he attacked Ukraine to fight the Nazis. Wait, didn't the legacy media and political class just spend the last five years telling us that political violence is just Justified, so long as you're fighting Nazis. Antifa literally means anti-fascism. They're fighting Nazis. How could you oppose that? Putin literally used the Antifa excuse. We're fighting Nazis, therefore we're virtuous. Isn't Putin just on a grand scale punching a Nazi? So yeah, save me the contrived sanctimony of a political class that has venerated political violence as a force for moral good. Suddenly wetting the bed in response to an overwhelming show of political violence. Save me the feigned outrage of a legacy media that dismissed and ignored the riotous destruction of American cities. Now being up in arms about the destruction of Ukrainian airports. The fiery but mostly peaceful obliteration of Ukraine's entire military infrastructure. <laughs> Save me the crocodile tears of NATO apologists. The same people who vehemently supported NATO bombing Libya in much the same manner that Russia bombed Ukraine. Save me the moral grandstanding of people who hate America. Saying Americans who don't blindly swallow Biden White House narratives are anti-American traitors. The way the right wing is openly rooting for Russia and its authoritarian leader is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Save me the cope and seethe of those who voted for the deep state war administration now suddenly complaining about war. Sold uranium to Russia. Democrats. Crimea invaded. Democrats. US domestic pipeline shut down. Democrats. Nuclear power halted. Democrats. Ukraine invaded again. Democrats. Starting to notice a pattern. Now the same people who usually hate the mere concept of nation states and borders have all added the Ukraine flag to their Twitter bio. One thing about the Democrat Ukraine Russia narrative is that it serves the purpose of giving liberals a sort of pseudo patriotism to use as a virtue signal. This takes takes the place of their obvious lack of real patriotism, they will use it to look down on you as an anti-American. 220,000 illegal immigrants have evaded US authorities since October. America's borders are about as resilient as a chocolate fire guard. Yet the same people who champion all that are suddenly all big mad about Ukraine's border being violated. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz warned Boris Johnson that Germany would not support kicking Russia out of SWIFT and neither would the EU. Nord Stream gas cooks. Wow, turns out Europe being totally dependent on utterly inadequate green energy isn't a good idea. Does the West have the resolve to face down Putin? Or has years of civilizational self-loathing finally taken its toll? While Russia wipes out a country's entire air defense system, the US Joint Chiefs of Staff are more concerned about wiping out racism. I want to understand white rage. 
And I'm white. While China moves to snuff out Taiwan, the Pentagon moves to snuff out white privilege. Autocratic leaders believe in hypermasculinity, raw physical power. They believe that might makes right. America has spent decades fetishizing soft, cuddly, emotional power. Putin and Xi don't respect it at all. This is the result. And how confident would you be in, say, 20 years' time? In the American military, the way it's heading, successfully defending Americans in a war against Russia and China, as I already explained in a previous video. The State Department was told directly that China thinks wokeism will subvert and collapse the West. Now Putin is imposing his will, safe in the knowledge that the Biden White House and the US Deep State are seemingly more concerned about the threat posed by American parents who complain about critical race theory at school board meetings than they are about actual foreign adversaries. And then we're left with the key question. Would any of this have happened under Trump? <laughs> It's absolutely crucial for you to help me fight the war on free speech by supporting me via subscribe star, link in description, and also signing up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter.